have a bright idea or you suddenly have a eureka moment, that's what you sort of live for, I think, as a researcher, uh, is that moment where you discover something that you know somebody else doesn't know and you've found new knowledge. Oh, it's been huge because I came back to Massey in 1990, or came back to New Zealand in 1994 to change areas of research and I was in the States in a very comfortable position at Georgetown University, had been there for 12 years, had tenure, but yeah there was an opportunity to come up, came up to come back to Massey, change areas of research and it's worked out I think very well. Oh, it is really, really important to invest in research. It's sort of part of what makes a society on the one hand, which is the spirit of curiosity. The, it's a cultural thing of human beings to be curious, to want to find out about things. But it also has payoffs in technology that emerges out of fundamental research. And I sit at the very fundamental end of research. So I don't necessarily see any immediate benefit for my research, but history is littered with examples of research that was done for no other reason than curiosity value, like climbing a mountain, uh, or going to a concert, or writing a piece of music, and later it's turned out to become really important to, mod to today's modern technology. So that's the main motivator for, for why we should be investing in research, is it does have a payoff. That is really well documented, but it is absolutely unpredictable to say that if we invest here, we'll get a payoff there. Things happen in very unpredictable manner. Well, it's been identified pretty much everywhere, including New Zealand, including New Zealand is pretty much the only driver of wealth creation and with that comes social well-being. So if you want to have a society where people can, where we can pay our sports teams to keep our players in New Zealand and not in France or in England, we want to have orchestras, chamber music, opera, ballet, you've got to invest in the only way we know how to generate sort of wealth and that's in research science, technology, engineering, mathematics and statistics. It's the only driver of wealth creation and ultimately then of social well-being. What I would like to achieve with my research for myself is to understand things I didn't understand. In terms of the world, that's a really complicated one. Uh, a lot of what I do, I don't see an immediate payoff, but I'm finding out things about proteins, about molecules, and impinge upon their properties. And some of these properties are of interest to designing drugs, uh, to harvesting light, to capturing electrons. So, yes, yeah, so what I really enjoy doing, and what, I, and what a lot of other researchers enjoy doing, is simply creating new knowledge not trying to solve a particular problem but to just go out and find new knowledge and with it hopefully some understanding. Looking around uh, I would say that curiosity is really the most important thing. You have to be curious about sort of things that are out there that we don't know about, that we don't understand. The other thing is perseverance. I think with research, most of the time, things don't go well. In my case, crystals don't grow. Or if they do grow, they don't diffract. So the one day in, well, not quite as bad as one day in 30, but when things do work, then it's, it's really exciting. But curiosity, perseverance, I think, are the two main characteristics of researchers. Oh, I think Massey Research, and actually the research from all other universities in New Zealand and the CRIs as well, I think we have made really major contributions in science, we've made significant contributions in technology and engineering. Uh, we have, I think, really batted, uh, punched above our weight uh, in terms of the resources that are given, both from industry and from the government. We do very well with what we've got. We could do an awful lot better, I believe, with more, with uh, not a whole lot more, but a significant amount more. 
I think Massey has been defining for quite some time uh, sort of innovative paths of research in New Zealand. I mentioned Paul Callahan's, Ted Baker. Ted Baker was the person that was largely responsible along with Andrew Brodie for facilitating my return to New Zealand after 17 years in exile. And you've got David Parry, probably the most highly cited scientist in New Zealand. David Penny doing really fundamental work in evolutionary biology and, and also Mike Henby on the more mathematical side. You know, there's just a huge number of really, really good researchers at Massey and I feel extremely privileged uh, to be sort of recognised that my research do does sort of stack up to some extent alongside theirs in the award of this individual research medal.